My name's Liz, I'm the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So today's video is going to be me sharing how I cut out an Anthea blouse or a sagebrush top using a metre of fabric. Um, I am wearing a sagebrush top at the moment, so it's a Friday Pattern Company pattern. I absolutely love the sagebrush and I have been able to um, cut it out of just one metre of fabric. Um, a couple of top tips I'll be sharing in this video. You might not want to follow the top tips that I've got because sometimes it means um, cutting the pattern pieces a different way to what's recommended. Um, I also like to crop my sagebrush tops, not by a huge amount, but I normally do a narrower hem than what the pattern recommends. Sometimes I'll cut the ruffle as two pattern pieces and not on the fold, and then I just have a little line going down the ruffle. But it's gathered, so you can't really tell if ever I've had to join the two pieces. And what I always try to do, I don't think I had to do it on this one, but what I always try to do is make sure that the line where it's been joined is hidden by the ruffle. I absolutely love the sleeves. I love everything about this top. Um, sometimes I've pinched out about an inch from the sleeve if I've needed to try and squeeze it onto a narrower piece of fabric. But most of the time when I'm cutting out a sagebrush or an Anthea blouse, um, it is wide fabric, which is why I've been able to get it cut out of a metre. But I'm going to film how I do it and talk you through it so you can see how I cut out the Anthea blouse and also the sagebrush top. So I've got the information in front of me for both of the patterns and insert pictures of what the patterns look like as well. And then I will be showing you how I lay out the pattern pieces and some top tips for trying to squeeze it out of a metre. Because I love being able to squeeze out patterns from less fabric than what the pattern company recommend. So the first pattern is the sagebrush top. I'll talk about that one first. So it is a um, lovely sort of blouse top. Uh, it's got a bias finished neckline and then that creates this lovely sort of tie where is it at the back and you get this little keyhole opening and then i've got little you've got the little ruffle going along the top here it's got these gorgeous poofy sleeves that are gathered into elastic here as well and then underneath the ruffle you can see that you've got gathering and then you've got a yoke on the front and then you've got a yoke on the back of the top um, the pattern recommends that you have quite a deep hem. I think it's about two inches. I never do a two inch hem. And I know that's to help um, the top sort of sit really nicely and give a really lovely neat finish. Um, but I always tend to tuck my sagebrush tops in. So you can see here I've tucked it in. If I untuck it, you'll be able to see that it's still quite long. Um, um, but yeah, I've just done a much narrower hem there. And it just means that I save a little bit of space on the fabric and I can generally get it cut out of a metre of fabric. In terms of fabric recommendations for the sagebrush, they recommend light to medium weight fabrics like a cotton, cotton voile, a linen, um, and it's um, designed for woven fabrics. They recommend um, that you need between 1.6 metres and 2.5 metres if you've got a wide fabric. If you've got a narrow fabric, they recommend that you need between 2.1 metres and 2.9 metres. So I'm going to show you how to cut it out of a metre of fabric and I'll tell you if it's, um, I'll tell you the width of the fabric as well um, to help you work out the pattern layout. In terms of sizes, it comes in extra small to a 7X. So for an extra small, it's a bust measurement of 32 to 33 inches, a waist measurement of 24 to 25 inches and a hip measurement of 34 to 35 inches. And then for a 7X, it's a 59 to 60 inch bust measurement, 52 to 53 inch waist measurement, and 62 to 63 inch hip measurement. So that's the sagebrush. I've actually put on one of my Anna Allen Anthea blouses for you to see, and I'll put pictures in of me wearing this. Um, this was made using a remnant, which was a metre of um, fabric that I got from Semi Sunshine years ago. It's a viscose crepe. It's this gorgeous sort of turquoisey green fabric. I've used green sort of vintagey buttons to go down the front. Um, you finish the neckline with bias binding and then you've got a fold over placket down here. It's a dartless blouse. Love these sleeves, really voluminous sleeves. And then they're finished with this cuff that you can just about make out there. It's got a curved hem um, around the front and a curved hem on the back as well. And I just love this fabric. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It's got um, peacocks on. I've just got it on with my sunshine jeans. It doesn't go. I've just popped this on for the purpose of this video. But I'll put pictures in of me wearing this blouse. So it comes in sizes double zero to 22. So for a double zero, it's a bust measurement of 31 inches, 
a waist measurement of 24 inches and a hip measurement of 34 inches. And then for a 22, it's a 48 inch bust measurement, 41 inch hip uh, waist measurement and 51 inch hip measurement. Um, I always sew up a size four for the Anna Allen Anthea blouse. Um, they suggest 1.5 yards of fabric if it's a wide fabric and if it's a narrow fabric, 2.5 yards. So I'm gonna show you how I make it work for both measurements of fabric. And then in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend woven fabrics, um, any type of cotton, linen, voile, um, cotton lawn, seersucker, um, double gauze would work for this blouse pattern as well. Um, I absolutely love the Anthea blouse too, and I think it's a really gorgeous pattern. And I have managed to get it cut out of a metre of fabric, but it was wide fabric. I would say the pattern piece for the sleeve for the Anthea blouse is super wide, so you do need to make sure that you've got wide fabric. Um, and that's how I've been able to cut it out of a meter. But again, I will show you how I lay out my pattern pieces for that pattern as well. So that's all the information for the Anthea blouse. I'll put in images of what it looks like now. Um, and now I'm going to show you how I would lay out my pattern pieces and some little hints and tricks that I follow um, and sometimes break those sewing rules. Um, but in my opinion, I have still got some beautiful blouses that work really beautifully as well. And um, it just means that I can use up some of those narrower fabrics and those shorter lengths of fabric that I've got in my stash. Okay, I've come into my front room where I've got four pieces of fabric laid out so I can show you how I lay out the sagebrush top and also the anthea top on a narrow piece of fabric that's one metre or I've got wide piece of fabric that is one metre. So I'm going to flip the camera around and I'll start with the, the I was going to say sagebrush, I'll start with the anthea top because I've got that in front of me. So I have found that I can only get the Anthea blouse out of narrow fabric if it's a plain fabric, because then you can turn the sleeve pattern piece a different way. So here at the moment, I've got some navy viscose linen. So I've just laid out the um, blouse uh, front and the blouse back, and I've just wiggled this down on the fabric just to make sure that I can just about fit the pattern pieces on and that is in my size that I sew up which I mentioned at the beginning um, and then what I do with the sleeve is you are supposed to lay it that way but there's no way it will fit on a narrow piece of fabric um, 112 centimeters so I've just turned it the other way and I found with a plain fabric it makes no difference really to the drape or the movement of the sleeve to have the sleeve pattern piece this way round and then I've just got the Anthea blouse cuff um, going lengthways instead of widthways as well. And then what I tend to do for the sagebrush and the anthea when you're cutting out the bias binding for the neckline is I will just um, lie it maybe at the bottom here where I've got a strip. I don't cut it on the bias, which is what you're supposed to do. But if I want to try and get it out of a meter of fabric, you can't cut it on the bias. So this is what I do uh, to make sure that I can fit it out of a meter of plain fabric or fabric that hasn't got directional print. And then I've got my space print fabric here. And this is 150 centimeters wide and it's a meter in length. And I can definitely get the Anthea blouse out of a meter using a 150 centimeter wide fabric. And I'll lay it out now and just show you. Um, so here is my space print fabric I got from System and Tucker and you can see that I've laid out all my pattern pieces how you should. Uh, so if I just stand up and show you, I'll come round. This is 150 centimetres wide and it is a one metre strip of fabric in length. Um, so I've got the bodice, um, the back piece and the front piece next to each other. The sleeve fits on really nicely because it's 150 centimetres wide. Whoops. And then I've just got the cuff. And then, like I said, with the navy uh, viscose linen, I don't cut the bias on the um, I don't cut the bias pattern piece on the bias. I just cut it wherever I've got a strip of fabric. And I know that you're not supposed to do that, but I've never had any problems with attaching it to necklines. I've never had any necklines that have, you know, gone wrong because I haven't got my bias binding cut on the bias. Um, and this way I'm just saving the fabric. I'm making sure that I can use every little bit of the fabric as well. So I can make sure that I can get a blouse out of one meter of fabric and use this gorgeous fabric as well. So that's the Anthea blouse. I'm now gonna move on to talk about the sagebrush top. And there are a few rules that I break when I try and get the sagebrush out of one meter of fabric. Okay, this is the sagebrush um, pattern and it's all the pattern pieces I laid out on this gorgeous mermaid cotton poplin that I've had in my stash for about three years. 
Um, this is 112 centimetres, so it's quite a narrow fabric. It is a metre in length. And there's a couple of things that I do when I want to try and squeeze a sagebrush top out of a narrow fabric with just a metre. So a couple of things that I do. I've got the front bodice piece um, on the fold, as they recommend. But what I do with the back um, pattern piece is I don't cut it on the fold, but I use the selvage as my seam allowance to make sure that I can create one back piece. Um, I just stitch it along the um, what should be the fold to create the fold with the pattern piece. You're supposed to cut that on the fold as well, but I don't think it really matters. This print is quite busy, um, and sometimes I try and pattern match, sometimes I don't. Um, because this print is quite busy, I don't think I will pattern match. Um, and then what I do with the sleeve to make sure that I can cut it out of a narrow piece of fabric, sorry if you can hear sirens in the background, is you can see here, I've just folded it over and I normally take about an inch out of the width of the sleeve um, and it still fits into the sleeve head because what you normally do is gather it between the notches. So it's fine. Whenever I've done this, it still works absolutely fine and I've still got that gorgeous poofy sleeve. It has just taken out a tiny bit of that height on the sleeve head. Um, and that just means that I can fit that pattern piece on 112 centimeter wide fabric. Um, the rest I cut as normal, so I've got the front yoke on the fold, I've got the back yoke, um, you cut two pairs, uh, you cut one pair, so two um, out of the fabric. I managed to get the ruffle on the fold, but sometimes if I can't do that, again, I'll cut that as two separate pattern pieces and I'll just stitch along here so you end up with a seam allowance, but I have got room on this fabric. And then the same rule I break with the bias binding, I don't cut it on the bias, I just cut it as a strip either going along the, the width of the fabric or the length of the fabric. It just depends on what fabric I've got left. So that's what my pattern pieces look like. So a little bit of cheating going on. Oh, and then the other thing to say, I always shorten the length of my sagebrush top. So you'll see here where I folded it over. So it's about um, three, three and a half centimeters for both of the pattern pieces. And again, that just means that I can squeeze it out of a meter of fabric that's 112 centimeters in, in the um, width. So that's the narrow fabric. And then next to it, I've got this gorgeous floral fabric that I got from New Craft House. And this is slightly wider, so this is 140 centimeters. So I'm just gonna move the pattern pieces over and then I'll talk through how I lay out the pattern pieces on a slightly wider fabric. Okay, I've moved the pattern pieces across. And what I have to do, because it's still only a meter of fabric, even though it's slightly wider fabric, so this is 140 centimeters. Um, the sleeve can be a normal pattern piece. So I've got rid of that fold that I had down the middle. Um, I've still got the front yoke on the fold. I've got the um, ruffle on the fold. I've got the bias binding going across and not on the bias. And then I've got the back yoke as two pattern pieces. Um, and then I've got the front body along the edge so it's cut on the fold. But then what I do with the back piece, and again, this is such a busy print, this fabric, that you won't really be able to see that I've joined the back pattern piece. Um, so I cut that as two separate uh, pattern pieces, but then I will um, sew them along where the fold should be. So that is the only cheat that I need to do for this fabric because it's 140 centimeters. So that sleeve will fit on this pattern, um, on this fabric. So I'm just not sat on the floor of my living room. So I hope that was helpful seeing how I managed to cut out the Anthea top and the sagebrush out of one meter of fabric. I do break some sewing rules, but it does mean that I can use that precious fabric um, and turn it into some tops that I know I'm gonna get lots and lots of wear out of. Um, so the main things are that if it says cut on the fold, I don't always cut it on the fold. I hardly ever cut my bias binding on the bias. Um, and you know, with this one, I didn't cut it on the bias and it still went in absolutely beautifully and I still got a really lovely um, neckline. Um, so just a couple of cheats. Sometimes I'll take length. Sorry, I went a bit wonky then. Sometimes I'll take length off the bottom of the pattern pieces and sometimes I'll reduce the size of the sleeve, especially if they're really voluminous um, like this. So I hope that helped because I've had lots of people requesting um, that I film how I lay out the pattern pieces for a metre of fabric for both the sagebrush and the anthea top. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, as always, please do give it a thumbs up and comment in the comments below if you've got anything, if you've got any more questions about how I lay it out or anything like that. 
Um, it works for me. I know not everybody's comfortable with breaking some of those sewing rules, but I, I have found that it hasn't impacted really on the wearability of the garment or how it looks. So they're little tips that work for me. Thank you as always for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be great if you could hit that subscribe button because you'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.